Hey, and welcome back. In today's video, I wanted to take you along through the entire process of preparing and playing a wedding gig with my band, The Pocket Kings. I've featured this group on my channel a number of times in the past, whether it be for a performing video or in a different vlog. And this is one of my favorite groups to play with on a regular basis. And this is something we do quite regularly, especially throughout the wedding season from maybe May until October. I wouldn't say that we're a true wedding band as we play all sorts of events like clubs, festivals, and other shows, but we found a lot of success and demand for playing events like corporate functions, private parties, and of course, weddings. I know some musicians dread these sort of society or jobbing gigs, but personally, I tend to enjoy these as the crowd is always built in and ready to have a good time. Additionally, these sorts of performances tend to be some of the most lucrative I do throughout a given year. And if on a typical show I'm making anywhere from $75 to $250, on a private event, I'm typically making anywhere from $250 to upwards of even $1,000. I play numerous weddings every year in different formats, and sometimes that could be a small jazz trio for a ceremony, cocktail hour, or dinner. And other times it can be for a reception with anything from pop, rock, funk, or top 40, or even big band swing. On this wedding we're checking out today, I'm not only playing drums with my funk and R&B band, but I also managed to handle all of the booking, logistics, communication, prep work, and even ran sound and lights. So to take you back to where it all began, I received a lead from a site where I market my various bands to potential vendors looking to hire entertainment for all sorts of private events. I won't waste any time plugging the specific site as they aren't sponsoring this video, but I pay a few hundred dollars every year to be listed in a premium tier, and each year I've done this, I've always found it to be a worthy investment and it's paid itself off quickly. So on February 15th of 2022, I got this specific lead giving me all the details for their wedding, like date, venue, time frame, as well as a few other logistical things that helped me generate a quote. In cases where I'm not working through this site and responding to direct inquiries I get, I have to ask for all of this information before I can even start tossing out any numbers. Typically my first quote to a client is a range, and with this band it could be anywhere from $2,500 up to $5,000. This range accounts for a few different factors like location of the event, how long our performance lasts, if we need to come in and set up early, and most importantly, our personnel. The Pocket Kings can play with as little as a five-piece band, but we'll typically add a two-piece horn section and on weddings like this, we'll also add a female vocalist. On this specific gig, we were booked to play with the full eight-piece group for three 60-minute sets. So after a few back and forth emails with the bride and groom, I sent out a contract on February 25th, and by March 7th, I had a signed contract along with a 50% deposit to secure the booking on our end. This stuff is essential for these sorts of events, and it's why I'm talking about it here before getting too far into this video. If I were playing on this wedding as a sideman, I wouldn't even be thinking about it until maybe the week leading up to the event, but as the booking agent and band leader for this specific gig, I have dozens of hours invested into this event 15 to 16 months before it even happens. So after having the contract in hand and the event booked, I can go ahead and coordinate with some of our core musicians and then hire some of the supplementary pieces like the horn players and additional vocals. At this point, I'd also probably coordinate with a sound and light company if needed, but honestly, most times I do this myself since I own all the equipment, and it saves a lot of money out of the budget. So now at this point, I can file this gig away for about a year before I even begin to touch base with our clients again to coordinate some of the final details like song request, special dances, the timeline of the day, all of the logistics with our equipment, and meal choices for our band members. A few times between March and May of 2023, I picked up conversations with the bride and groom again to gather all of this information and begin planning out my day a little more. On this specific wedding, we agreed to play their first dance song, which they chose to be a very specific arrangement of Frank Sinatra singing Fly Me to the Moon with the Count Basie Orchestra. Typically, I'll email the band members about a week before the show to give them all the details they might need for that day, so by early June, I had made time to write a condensed arrangement of this specific song for our instrumentation. On some gigs, we could easily just play this off a lead sheet from the real book, but in this case, it was really important for us to match the recording 
because the bride and groom had worked out a dance that was choreographed to this exact arrangement. A couple days later, I sat down and wrote a set list for the night, and I can usually work off some sort of template or previous list from a recent gig, but I also like to change things up from time to time to not have a gig get too stale or repetitive. Obviously on wedding gigs, it's important to have all the hits on the playlist, but I also try to balance the singers rotating off lead vocals, as well as a few instrumentals to give them a break. So after finishing the set list, I could email the band with everything they'd need like the address of the venue, parking information, attire, a timeline for the day, a brief overview of the set list, and specific songs to watch out for. But that's really the extent of prep on my end. In the days leading up to this wedding, I of course had other gigs to prepare and play for, and on Thursday night, the Pocket Kings played for a concert series at the Green Bay Botanical Gardens, and this gave us a chance to run some of that material for Saturday during our sound check, and even play a few of those tunes on this specific performance. On Friday night, I played with another group I work with regularly, and then came the big day, Saturday. On this specific date, I had to play another gig that morning on a patio at a bar during our local farmer's market, so it was set to be quite the busy day, and we played from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And after a couple hours of jazz, mimosas, and egg rolls, I packed up quickly and made my way back home to swap out some equipment and begin packing for the wedding. I was able to keep some pieces like drum hardware in the car, but I had to swap out my smaller jazz kit for a larger set that was more appropriate for the style of music we'd be playing. I also needed to swap out my thinner jazz cymbals for a set of more versatile pop cymbals. In addition to all of the drum equipment, I needed to pack a full PA system and lights. And since I managed to carry all of this equipment in my Prius, it's become important for me to find gear that is suited for larger setups and events, but is most importantly convenient and compact. The core of my PA setup is two EV Evolve 30M speaker systems. This setup has a small sub and an array of speakers above, along with a built-in digital mixer on the back, avoiding the need for any extra stands or cables to connect everything. These are great because for some situations, I can get away with a single 30M and use the digital mixer on the back and control it from my phone or tablet. For the larger gigs, I'll use both of these speakers, but with a Behringer XR18 digital mixer, which also acts as a recording interface in my studio. This mixer allows me to not only mic a full band with eight people, but gives us six independent monitor mixes, which band members can mix themselves for their own in-ear rigs. I'll also bring a smaller 12-inch powered speaker made by Alto to use as a wedge for players without in-ears to have some sort of monitoring on stage. And then finally for lights, I use this really compact set of Chauvet Q1N pin spot lights. I know these don't look like much, and I've owned the standard lighting trees in the past, but these lights are great because one, they are wireless and keep me from running any extra cables. Two, they are magnetic and can be mounted in unique places without the need for a stand. And three, they put out a nice spread of light and add a wash of color to our stage setup. I also keep a small box of various cables, mics, mounts, and anything else I might need with this setup. This rig of lights and sound all fits in my back seat with the drums in my trunk. After packing all of the musical equipment, I went back downstairs to put together a small rig of equipment to record audio and video for this vlog, as well as additional content, and then I went back upstairs to pack a change of clothes before hitting the road. And pro tip for all you aspiring giggers out there, don't wear your dress clothes through the entire day where you'll be hauling and setting up a lot of equipment. I guarantee you'll sweat through it and you deserve to be comfortable through that process. And for me, this gig is nearly a 12 hour process and I only need to be dressed up in formal attire for four to six hours really. I hit the road a little after 2.30 p.m. and made the hour long drive up to Green Bay where this wedding was taking place. Different venues pose different challenges, but for this wedding, we'd be playing at a beautiful old historic theater downtown. They added on a smaller venue for concerts and private events maybe eight years ago, and it's a venue I've worked in before, so I was fairly confident with knowing the layout and acoustics of the space. But again, these are all details I'll work out in communication with either the bride and groom or a wedding coordinator in advance of this big day. I arrived on site just after 3.30 p.m., 
and parked my car temporarily just to unload and get all of my equipment indoors. I can typically move all of my equipment in two trips due to the convenience of this rock and roller cart. I've used this cart for about 12 years, multiple times every week, so I've gotten it down to a system, but on the first trip I'll stack my drums, cymbals, and hardware on the cart, and then on events where I'm bringing sound as well, I can fit all of the PA, lights, mixer, monitor, and accessories on the second load. After getting everything unloaded, I could then take my car to a nearby parking garage and then get back to the venue to begin setting up. This venue is pretty unique because we have a dedicated stage for the band to play on, but we make things work in any room, even when we're stuffed away in a corner on the floor. On these wedding gigs, you'll see I'm first on site, and typically I'm there three to four hours in advance of any other band members because I'll make sure I have all of my equipment set up prior to the ceremony especially when the ceremony might be in the same exact space we're playing. Sure, it's not great to have to drag out my schedule by this much, but it's important for these kinds of events, and it's a major reason why the fee for hiring us for a wedding can be so much more than a normal club gig. Over the next 30 to 60 minutes, I'll set up drums, and then move on to PA, setting up speakers, lights, getting cables run, and then do some real light testing of different microphones and get a feel for our volume in the room. This is nice to do without other musicians present because I don't have to work through anyone else's equipment or work around different people, especially in tight spaces. I wrapped up my setup around 5 p.m. and then changed my clothes and found a spot near the theater to kill the next hour and get some work done. I don't have any footage to share of the arrival and setup of the other band members and that's because by the time they arrived around 5.30, it was cocktail hour, meaning there were plenty of guests in the site where we were performing. I decided not to film any of this because by this time there were plenty of guests around, and I didn't want to be a distraction as I was being paid to perform, not shoot my own vlog. We never actually did any sort of formal sound check, and that's because the only way we'd have the privacy to be loud and not be a distraction would be to have the entire band come in before the wedding even started to do this. This would force us to extend our timeline for the day by a lot, and in turn, I'd have to charge a higher rate for this. Luckily, with the digital mixer we use, I can save presets and load them very quickly, and really get by with just plugging in all the equipment and doing a line check to make sure everything is working before we play. One of the other unique things we did at this specific wedding was bring along our own videographer and photographer to grab new promotional materials for the band to help us use in marketing ourselves to weddings. This is something we'll invest money into a few times a year to get quality content of us to share on social media and with potential clients. Since we were bringing him along to a wedding this time, I made sure to ask the bride and groom as well as their photographer if it was okay for us to do this, and they were extremely accommodating with our request. So in addition to the footage you'll see of us performing that I shot myself, I'll drop in some of the footage from the videographer as well. Over the next four hours, we continued to play three sets up until 11.30 p.m. And on this day, we had a fun dancing crowd throughout the entire reception. A lot of times the crowd will start to really die out in the last set, but not on this one. 
Once we finished playing, we didn't waste too much time before beginning to pack up, and I typically try to start with PA and lights, as it's towards the front of the stage, and it would just be too difficult to try and haul my drums out from the back while everybody else is getting their own cables picked up and equipment moved out of my way. It takes me all in all about 45 minutes to an hour to get all of the drums and PA packed and loaded, but typically I'm the last member left on site. After getting everything loaded up back in the car, I hit the road around 12.30 a.m. and made my hour-long drive back to Oshkosh. Of course, I did make a stop at my favorite late-night food spot, Quick Trip, to grab a snack and a drink, but I finally made it home just before 2 a.m., and at that point, I was just too tired to even think about unloading all of this equipment, so I called it a night. Once I woke up the next day, I went out and unloaded the car. I know people are going to leave comments telling me the risk of leaving gear in a car overnight, and I hear you. But to that, I'll remind people that I'm not living in a major city, and my house is in a pretty remote area where there's not a lot of traffic or people driving through, unless they are coming specifically to this street. After getting everything out of the car, I can go through and sort any cables or mics that need to be stored elsewhere, and also charge my lights and wireless in-ear rig so I won't take it to the next gig with no battery life. A lot of my gigging gear gets stored just off the garage in this little mudroom, but on this gig, I also brought a number of pieces that live in the basement and things I use in my studio. So I took the time to get all of these pieces back where they belong. Lastly, I unpacked my drums from their cases and then changed out the band's logo head back to the more standard drum head so I could get back to using these drums in the studio. I hope you enjoyed taking this look behind the scenes at what it's like being in my shoes playing for and coordinating a band that plays weddings. As you can see, the work that goes into these sorts of events is massive compared to the standard bar or restaurant gig, and the time investment is really much more than what people think when they see us performing on stage for just those three to four hours. On this specific gig alone, I'd have to estimate that I have somewhere between 25 to 30 hours of booking, arranging, coordinating, and executing this gig. Even if I was just a hired gun or sideman on this specific gig, I'd still easily have 8 to 10 hours in travel, setup, and performing. But with all that said, I still love doing these sorts of events, especially in the mix of all the other opportunities I get on a regular basis in my career as a freelance musician. I'd love to hear what you thought of this behind the scenes look, so leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on future video releases. And until next time, thanks. Thank you.